excited for your future, future. The best is yet to come. Hot topics, we're talking and vibing right here on Kingdom Connection. Oh, 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 oh. Enriching, embracing, informing right here on Kingdom Connection. With the Apostle Otis B. Young. You wanna be respected. Then you gotta get connected. This is a personal invitation from yours truly, Otis Young, to come worship with me at the Kingdom. Kingdom Life Tabernacle is conveniently located at 1410 East Indian Head Drive off of Appalachian Parkway. On Sundays, we have two services, one at 945, which is our hour of power. The second service begins at 11 a.m. I'm telling you, both the power pack and the atmosphere is conducive for miracle signs and wonders with healing, deliverance, and a first word. On Thursdays, we have Bible study called Walking in the Word at 630, where the Word of God is taught with simplicity and life application. Again, the address is 1410 East Indian Head Drive off of Appalachian Parkway. Join me. Beat me there. Meet me there. Sundays at 945 and 11 and Thursdays at 630. I would love to see you soon at the Kingdom. One service at the Kingdom will change your life. For more information, call 692-3205 or log on to lifeatthekingdom.net. Again, 692-3205 for more information. Listen, keep that dial locked. This is Otis Young. Some people call me Apostle Young. Some people call me Pop. Some people call me Dad. And my wife calls me her husband. But my mama named me Otis. Keep that dial locked. It's Kingdom Connection, man. I am honored today. It's been a while since I've been in this seat. Uh, Miss Tanisha Reese, she got that. She got she got the evening, the afternoon off, the, of the morning off. But she's off the day. But I'm here. And in the studio today, I have a, young, a woman of God that needs no introduction. She's a sweetheart. Uh, she's a daughter of the kingdom and she has an awesome testimony so say hello to everybody out there in youtube and television land hi everybody i'm rose how y'all doing today all right they said holler back at you rose now listen if, what, your, your facebook name is very original yes. what's your facebook name here uh rose she positive okay she positive why, That's right. why, why is rose how did rose she positive come by because i saw it i was like okay i feel it you know <laughs> Not some people don't like that. They say they don't like the negative energy. So why the role she positive come about? Um, one reason why I came with she positive because I am positive about myself and my status. I am um, HIV positive, and I decided to name uh, she positive for women who are HIV positive that might not be positive within themselves or still have um, insecurities about being HIV positive. So I decided to say that, like they say, you are HIV positive, but I didn't want to put that label on me. So I said she's positive, as in. Uh, I am HIV positive, but I'm also positive within myself. I love it. I love it. So listen, somebody's out there watching that says, hey, I'm HIV positive, and you don't you don't see the positiveness in the situation. Right, right. But one thing about Rose, she decided, hey, I'm going to be positive, even though I'm HIV positive, I'm positive about who I am and I'm secure about the situation. So that's not yes. the end of the road for that's somebody right. that's, that's right. watching. Thank you for your transparency and your willingness. Now, some people call you Jack and now Jack. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to pee this thing out now. Pee this and them. So how do we come up with where did the rose come from? I got the sheep out there. So where did the rose come from? Uh, rose is because I feel like I'm a rose uh, grown out of concrete. I got you know, it. Um, because I've been through a lot in my uh, tests that were turned into testimony. I decided to be uh, say that you know what I'm, I'm going to say. I'm a rose that grew out of concrete. All right, a rose that grew out of concrete. <laughs> Amen. So that rose had to come up through the cracks. That's right. I got it, my prophet. You talking the language I'm talking? I love that right there. <laughs> Amen. And you, you and, and I think prophetically when you say the word rose. It says different colors of roses, different, but then also that God's. This is your hour to blossom, woman of God. Right. It's your hour to blossom like a rose. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As you've been planted in the house of God and planted in the things of God, yes. God calls you to blossom. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go from two different angles. I know you did a, a previous interview talking about being HIV positive and overcoming those challenges, but remaining positive. And if you could say someone, some sometimes somebody, maybe they didn't see the other in the other interview, but I'm gonna go more into the mommy, the mommy, the mommy okay. part of okay. you. But what what would be a word that you could share? with somebody that's maybe HIV positive uh, that's not that, 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 that's not as positive as she positive um, that it's not over it is not over and that you can still live your life normally 
being HIV positive. I got it. Listen, it's, I grabbed it. It's not over. It's not over. And it's not a, a status. You are still you. You can still be you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to prophesy to someone that's just watching. You don't look like what you're going through. That's, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's Listen, some of you said what I've been through. No, what I'm going through. You, if you right. only knew what I'm, what I'm going through, what it took for me to get to this studio today, to get here to this chair today. But to God be the glory for sustaining and for God to be the glory for breakthrough. And to, to, be, to be honest, if you didn't tell anybody, I wouldn't know. Right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so you're, you are healthy, you are well, and you are positive. Yes. Well, my, May is all, it's two main things that we've that I've discovered that we celebrate. I want to talk about both of them. Let's start with the, the mommy, uh, the mommy you, because basically um, you're, you're temporarily single mom. Right, right. All right, we're going to put someone to be married, but okay, <laughs> amen. amen. But, but, but uh, I've asked somebody, I said, you married? She said, no, Pastor, but it's complicated. So somebody, you might be dealing with complicated matter, but it's all good. <laughs> it's complicated. But how many wonderful children do you have? Six. 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 Six wonderful children and um, single right now temporarily. Uh, you know, you have a supportive partner and I'm grateful for that. Yes. Um, but how, how where can you say that single mother that you know that you got six, baby? That's a that's a whole tribe. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> you, did you start young? No judgment zone. I waited, you know, and you know, how many baby dads? What, what this thing look like? You know what I'm saying? What, <laughs> what's the makeup? You know, let's just keep it real. Let's right, just, the let's makeup. Just, the makeup. Yeah. Um, I have my first child when I was uh, 19 wow. um, in 2009. She's 14 now, and I have um, my youngest daughter. She turned two yesterday. So. Wow, so you got a wide array. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. What are, those, what are some single mom challenges that you've had to overcome? Um, knowing that it needs to, a village, it takes a village to raise a child. That is something that uh, I had to learn as I was having children because again, I have um, six children, I have five different baby fathers. Um, so going through that, it, I had to learn that it does take a village. I okay. never knew what that meant uh, growing up, but I, you can't do it alone. I got and, it. and I was always, you know, I can do this. I, got, I can provide for them financially. I can let them, we're going to church. I'm going to teach them this and we're going to do the schoolwork but that's not all it takes as a, it. as a single mom. So. I got it. And what I want to say, that, you know, when we, when the Lord bless Kingdom Life Tabernacle moved to this location, he said, don't put a church label on it. Call it a village. Right. The village. It, it, the village. It takes a village to raise a child. Okay. Um, I'm a witness, even with a double parent, my wife and I, we still had to look to the village because there were others in the village that we needed to help us with some areas because everybody, I may not have, but somebody in the village can help. Let's, right. let's, let's go for it. And you right. want to build the right village. Now, you know, we had a village coming up, you know, I'm 50, I know you're about 30 something, but, <laughs> but, but I, we had a village where the, where the grandmother, where the grandma, we call a big mama, little mama, aunts and the people that looked out for us, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We may have been latchkey, but you know, we knew not to go out of that house because we had some nose and neighbors, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, listen, you get right, back in right. there or, or make sure we got homework done and, uh, you know, if lights were off, hey, we, it was a, my next teaching core from one yeah. side to the other <laughs> because the village looked out for one of them. That's right. Yeah, and, and that's what happened. We got we stopped looking out for one of them. So to that single mom that's out there, she's got six children, five different baby fathers, baby daddies, but but no drama at this point. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but but but, but but realizing that hey, after bumping her head a few times, right. you need a village. That's right. But I say you know um, guard your village, build the village the way that, with, with the people. It's like going to um, do it a la carte. Yeah. Because everybody, you, you want to build a proper village, uh, and, and that's what I did. Build, build a la carte with those who can come to the table with other with uh, to, to help you in the matter. Awesome. Now, being being a single mom, you know, with, with that, and, uh, um, you overcame the challenges with, by building a village. Uh, how how did you handle dating? <laughs> I didn't bring everyone around uh, my children, who I didn't think that would last. Uh, no, I date to marry. Oh, so, that's good. That's good. Um, when I didn't believe that they would. I didn't bring everyone around my children, so. I got it. Yeah. So basically, listen, every other week you didn't have a different home. No, right. I, you know, I, mean, I work in education, so that's, that's what right. it is. That's and right. I, I, mean, they, 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 I got a new uncle today. Yeah. What? What's your uncle's name? <laughs> your uncle, I say, hey. <laughs> that is No joke, no joke, no, but your children didn't know four or five different uncles. Right. I got it. And that can become a little challenging because then they form attachment issues. 
Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and it can, which can lead to emotional issues or trauma if not careful. It sure can. Now, I know um, uh, recently you had to overcome a major challenge of some domestic violence, and I appreciate you being overcome. You you hit that very well. I, I didn't I didn't I didn't know. I knew that like in the realm of the spirit, you were going through some challenges. You were dealing with some things, mm -hmm. but you know the, the Lord did not show me everything, and He's not obligated. He just showed me to keep you in prayer. Uh, but but somebody's out there that doesn't that, that is scared. Or someone out there doesn't know how to get out. How can how can you share? And we I don't necessarily need to release His name, but how did you overcome? And how did you get out of that situation? Because I see some that do a, a repetitive cycle, and that is no judgment zone. That's right. just what we. Yeah. Right. They, they, they say they out, but then they, you know, the person may do something and they pull them right back in. Right. And they're right I back was in. the repetitive cycle at wow. one point. Yes. Um, I was in that relationship for three years, actually. Wow. Um, in those three years, God kept showing me this is not the person for you. You don't need to be here um, time after time. And it was just something that I, I, I wanted. I didn't want to deal with having another partner or going through. I thought that I was the person I was going to marry. Yeah. Um, and so what I would do was make excuses for the person person for him and when I while I was making excuses I was praying that God would change him saying that God please change this person three 360 around I know that he can do it uh, right. he got you know he was he was baptized he got baptized and that spirituality that lasted for a couple of months and then he went back to his uh, same domestic ways and because uh, like some would say love is blind. I don't um, say that anymore. I do believe that God is love. So love is not blind because you can fully see love and God explains love in the Bible, you know, what correct. love is. So, correct, correct, um, Love is not blind. You can see it and, it and it's there. It's just that um, the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. So I was living in the flesh and I had to ask God to strengthen my flesh and how I... Um, got out of it was a challenging situation uh, where he was incarcerated for, for a very long time. And wow. so um, I was still, we were still talking and I still had love for him. And I believe that when I decided to finally talk to some talk to somebody else or get to know another person is when I was able to release myself from making excuses and seeing what what love really really was and who um what I was missing in a wow. three-year relationship and so you're very transparent you were making excuses from someone he would do certain things you're like oh he's just angry right mama wasn't maybe there maybe I should never say this or maybe I should never say that let's see what's wrong is it me or what's wrong with me I will always say that it was me or okay maybe I should never did that at that time or what's, what's going on what right like you the trigger right yeah right. got it yeah. got it I just want to encourage somebody it's not you no, no it's not you uh, get you to get out before it's too late I've seen people die spiritually or physically yeah. in domestic violence relationships it's right. very passionate for me. Uh, did the children see any of it all? Um, my oldest daughter, she did. She she seen a couple of. She heard. They didn't see it with their eyes, but they heard behind closed doors. They knew what was going on. God. They knew what was going on. And um, it was a time where I, I went through a lot of uh, trials in that three year relationship. I had a lot of. Uh, I'm going to say situations that happened where God was trying to tell me to get out and I was still being disobedient. Mm -hmm. um, I, I lost my kids. Well, my son, I had, um, he's three years old now. When he was first born, um, he was taken away from me at one month because of a domestic situation where I didn't I didn't know anything about DCF or this, uh, how, how it happened. But um, I called the police for help. But my son was there, and I had just had him. He was only three weeks old. And so you called the police for help. For help, mm -hmm. and, and they tried to take your child. No, they called. Um, they took um, the father away. Uh, were told me to get out because I didn't have any marks of abuses on me. When they came, like I said, I was still making excuses. I called the police for help, but when they got there, it was a different story. Okay. I told a different story. But because the police were called when my child was there for a domestic um, dispute, the next day CPI had came, uh, child protective services or came out mm -hmm. to see what was going on and when I told them what was going on they had to take my son away and so he, yeah and he was put in uh, a foster home wow. they're a nice a nice family but they, he was put in a foster home and I and um, I had went through um, separation issues with that but I still made excuses I'm going to get my child back this is okay and he would make excuses as well he would say you know we're going to get through this together I'm sorry apology after apology and I still um, because I have a forgiving heart 
I, I just thought that, okay, we're going to get through this together. But he um, stayed in foster care until he was one and a half years old. Wow, so that was over a year? Yes. Because you had a plan, the child protection investigator gave you a plan, but you never fulfilled right. everything on the plan. Exactly, because um, the father wasn't supposed to be in the house at all after that. And he was still there. Got it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then you have a one month old, and he needed his mother's love and that right. postpartum and all of that. Right. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. But she was trying to work with this, work with him. Yeah. I thought that he could change and it was going to change. That's that's all I kept thinking. And then I do believe in um, mm -hmm. the power of prayer. So I just mm -hmm. kept praying to God, please change him, whatever it is. Take the, um, he had an addiction. Um, so I was praying to God to take well, the And he take, can't take it with Right. And I believe I knew that he could. Um, but certain situations and circumstances have to work with when God works for you. You know, you can't be disobedient in a plan, that, a purpose. When God has a purpose and a plan for you, you have to be obedient and um, sacrifice for it and do it and those things that I, I didn't sacrifice for it and I was praying for God for a change but I wasn't making a change myself. Right. And sometimes, you know, in my early years in the prophetic, we're looking for um, God to speak to us audibly right? and he's speaking through the circumstance and the right. situation. Yeah. <laughs> and right. you, you feel yeah. like, mm -hmm. God, I'm waiting on an answer from you. God, send that answer. Yes. He's telling you by yes, based on what it is. Right, 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 right. I'm real now, being honest. And I've stayed too long waiting for the audible, you know what I'm saying? And he's audibly speaking through the circumstance and situation. He speaks to the weather. Right. He speaks to other things, you feel me, versus us just waiting to hear the voice of God that direction. Correct. So you have to be sensitive with your prophetic senses and knowing God is speaking. That's right. I got it. I got it. I got it. So let's fast forward. Mommy, you get, you became a young mommy. So you were mommy at, you said 19? 19, yeah. Got it. Now you're raising teenager. Um, and May is also um, Mental Health Awareness Month. And so with that, we bring awareness to it. And sometimes in the, in the African-American community, it has been a taboo situation. Right. And I deal with students as early as three that deal with mental health and they need a supportive environment. And I got most of us emotionally, mentally healthy in all areas of our, all areas of our life. And so um, tell me about your experience or tell our viewers about your experiences that you've had to deal with, with mental health yourself. We could Based upon what about being she positive, as well as uh, some family members that may have had some some uh, mental health challenges and stuff. Um, I'm going to start with uh, my children, actually. Okay. Uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, I believe uh, she was going through some um, mental health issues and that was only because of what she experienced while uh, she was staying with me by seeing the domestic um, abuse and having been uh, separated from her home from home and um, not being around me so I wasn't able to give her um, the love and support that she needed she had to get it from other places and that gave her anxiety wow. um, she was in depressive modes um, I do know a couple of times where uh, suicide had came in to play um, and it's mental health is something that uh, we look at and we think that you're crazy they put a, a, a word on it and they don't want to uh, address it but it, it is out there and that can be anything and it, it can be uh, stressful situations like you said emotional physical um, anything I had to deal with that with my children and I'm gonna say my mom as well um, I, I did have a village growing up. My mom, my dad, and my grandmother were around to raise me. Um, and I experienced mm -hmm. first mental um, was with my mother. Okay. She used to have spasms when I was growing up and when I was little I didn't know why what was going on I couldn't explain it and they said that she was just she, I don't I don't really know the word or what they diagnosed her with but she was just going through some things when I was younger and I, th I believe it was depression because I know that depression can leave you uh, with different situations of how you feel and it will change your aspect of how you deal with certain Correct. situations will. as far as parenting as far as where you want to be in your life so I really believe that it has something to do with depression, which is a strong um, mental problem. So I had to deal with it with my mom first, and then now that I have children, um, I'm seeing it myself. And I actually went through some mental problems as well. I was suicidal at one point when I first found out that I was HIV positive. 
and right. I, I overcame that. But it is something that has to be addressed and um, can be addressed. And it doesn't mean that you're crazy. It doesn't mean that um, you can't get through it. There's always something that, there's always help. Right. And I, I, mean, I think that's, that's always help. Always. And listen, if you don't know where to get help, um, I know you can dial, it, was it two, is it two on one for Big Ben? Um, for Big Ben, uh, two on one. Yeah. Two on one is there to help you. If you can make it to 1410 Eastern Indian Drive, <laughs> listen, if we don't have the answer, it's a village, it's somebody. We're going to pray for you. We're going to help right. point you in the right direction yes. of getting the necessary help that you need because at the end of the day, we all deal with some form of challenges. I am very transparent. I've recently last 10 years, you know, dealt with, I've always dealt with them, it seems like it, but those try to commit suicide myself, so I know what that feels like. Um, those suicidal spirits will come in, and I have to uh, get a regulated mind and say, devil, you're lying. And I told them, when you're going to leave me alone now? But some <laughs> spirits try to lurk. They're lurking spirits. They leave for a season. If there's any crack in the armor, they'll come back in. And some people say, as successful as you are, and at that time, I'm not looking through the lens of success. I'm looking at the lens of overwhelm. I'm looking through the lens of this is situation I don't get no better right. and um, you know I'm better off you know and, and I'm a businessman then I find that if I if I were a joke and like, this is a real joke I told my wife I said I didn't know if I killed myself you wouldn't went off the policy because for a long time I was like hey <laughs> <laughs> but at least you know from a business standpoint literally <laughs> we going out there take that 1.5 and you listen church pay for <laughs> listen she good she good Lord I you know at least I know the family good you feel me right. um, and so it is one of those challenges especially with dealing with low stuff Steam and different things like that. Yes. Uh, it can it can really push you to that place, but it is a mental thing. And so the battleground is in the mind, and we have to overcome those challenges in the mind. And I told us, listen, I'm not gonna kill myself. I'm not gonna. I'm not running off the road. I'm not gonna take these pills. Yeah, I got. I'm not. You, I got rid of the suicidal note. Burned it up a few years back. And listen, because I, I kept looking at it. That's where God has brought me from. But every time I would look at it, so I can put something in my mind and get rid of that. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Been through some bad relationships before I got married. And then I tell people when you're dealing with being a pastor, sometimes a lot of pastors deal with suicidal thoughts. Because a lot of times I have to under, I've now understood apostolically wise, everybody does not come to stay. Right. Some people come to get what they need, and my job as an apostle is to raise them and send them out. Be grateful they came in to get what they need and go out, but don't form no strong attachments where you are just diabolically, you, you're in a place, and you're, you're, you're in a dark place. Right. right. And you can't get out of it. Yes. I got it. So having a mom growing up that may have had some, some uh, to deal with depression. Do you feel like it, do you, do you, How was your relationship with mom? Because we did with Mother's Day. How, if you can share, if you can't share, you can take a pass on that one, Rose, and I will not be mad with you. <laughs> no I'm just flowing. How do, how do you feel like that relationship was? Um, I believe I had a close relationship with my mom, but I couldn't uh, express everything that was on my mind to her. And I couldn't express the things that were on my mind to my grandmother either. Um, because, like I said, she didn't spare the rod. So <laughs> I didn't believe I could be as open. And with my mom, I didn't believe that she would understand because she was going through uh, depression or she wouldn't understand what I went through because um, she was dealing with insecurities herself. So I, I, I love my mom and she loved me. And I was uh, provided everything that I needed as a child. That's good. Um, but it... Um, Emotionally, I would have to say that I had to deal with that. Figure that out myself. <laughs> <laughs> like we bumped, bumped, bumped a few times yes. here and there. I got it. I got Live it. Live and learn. Like, so I got it. I got it. But I like the fact that, that no matter what has come, the she positive side of you makes lemonade out of your situation. Yes. All right, let's, let's, let's go back to mommy mode, okay? I know we kind of talked, and I was on my personal soapbox, so that suicidal spirit is, is one that I, that I sound the alarm because I know many leaders that are suffering in silence. Yes. Uh, sometimes I get them in my inbox, and you can still inbox me. Like, sometimes I get that text message, say, Apostle, Pastor, would you please call me ASAP? And I, I, I just, by the way of the spirit, I know what they're dealing with, you feel me? Maybe dealing with a private struggle that's causing them to want to commit suicide. And I want to tell you that God has promised his life on this side and that more abundantly you don't have to kill yourself there is a way out there is help and um, Christ is there with you please 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 don't do it please don't do it I don't do it like I was thinking it I'm better off uh, I don't do it you have a purpose on your life and God wants to bring you to alignment and push you and bring, push you back in purpose and you'll get through this all right we're gonna go back to the mommy mode okay, okay. Um, you're awesome mother Thank your you. kids love you they're always happy children when I see them but let's talk about how do you find 
how do you juggle financially? How do you even shop for six children? I mean, well, part of my unbeknownst, I have a challenge with one of my children. I have three, and now I have two in the household. Um, so right. we have four now. I've had adopted a bonus daughter through death. Uh, and so, but I have my oldest daughter and my, and my bonus daughter, and it's like, whoa, you know, yes. Dad, I want this. Dad, I want this. I'm like, listen, you're going to eat what I'm bringing to the house. But how, do you, how do you handle cooking and eating and all that? What, may, how, what, what does that look like? Oh, it's very busy for me very busy. Um, like I said, my oldest is 14 and my youngest, she just turned two. Um, so in between the oldest ones, the 14 and the 13 year old, it's online shopping. <laughs> they say, Mom, this is what I want and I look at it. It's, this is my inbox, my, I mean, uh, my check, my card. And so they all from Instacart, like yes. Publix or Walmart. Right, right. Yeah. and then so I get that for them. But uh, financially, it is it is a struggle, actually. Right, because so, you know, the cost of food is going yes. up. I mean, listen, I ain't trying oh, yes. to go get on you, but this cost of food is, is going up. Them little stamps, it's, That's it's, right. it's, it's not stretching like they used to. It don't work for the whole month now. No, not like it used to. I'm for real, not for real. I'm telling really? you. Really? Yeah, the chicken, you know, I wanted some chicken wings the other day. Mm -hmm. I said, let me go on up to these leg quarters over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even eat thighs like that, but I'm not, I'm not going to pay this much for chicken. I'm going to give me a steak. Right. And so I get it. I get it. So that you use, you allow the older ones to pick out what they need and you have to make yes. you call the stretch meals and try to still stay healthy. Yes, that's right. So how does this one work? Because I know that each one of your children have their own temperament and personality on individuals. Oh, yes. So how do we handle that? Um, pray. Prayer. Um, and as far as discipline right now the older one older generation you know they're with uh, social media and, and tablets and things like that so i take away screen time for them okay, that's good. and for the youngest ones they um take away tv them watching tv all right i, I know we talked about the discipline area having that many children so you do a lot of uh takeaways or think that you take away the screen time you know the phones and all of that um but you, you weren't like the old school mom with the belt with a cure everything and that, that, that. I wasn't. Um, <laughs> my, my, and, and, and I believe, I don't want to say I made a mistake in that area. I'll just say I left that out. Um, because, again, it has something to do with my story as being um, HIV positive. When I was growing up, my grandmother, she did not spare the rod. But I wasn't able to come to her about uh, the problems that I was having with insecurities because I was afraid of a whooping. And I, yeah, <laughs> so I, everything I, it was, yes, uh, I, if you don't I, do this right, you're going to get a whooping. Yes, <laughs> in school, or you're going to get a whooping. Yes, ma'am. So I did exactly what she wanted me to do and I had to find out on my own how to live and learn. So um, when I had my first child, I always promised myself that I would not um, do so much as, I know the, it's what the Bible says. If you spare the rod, then you're spoiling the child. But the and rod so, is also representing profit. Right. Thank you. It don't, it don't always have to be physical. Right. That's true. if you take my cell phone, I promise you. Yeah, that's, but that's, then it's going <laughs> to give, give me the yes. I, yes. And I can mouth back. That's right. I got it. I got yeah. it. So um, I did not do that much of um, discipline as far as whoopings or things like things like that. And, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to call mistakes mistakes. I'm just going to say things that were left out. I had to learn that, especially with my older daughter, when she was acting out for attention and she didn't get uh, the discipline that she that I that she should have gotten. Um, I got gotcha. It it came to other aspects in life. So um, I do believe that an alternative as far as taking away things that they love as far as getting a woman as well it will work out as well but that was something that i left out i scored her i got so it i got it the children, so. and you have to know what works for each child i mean i have two brothers and they may be watching but i get this and i, I didn't want no spanking you feel me but they had a cure all you feel me yes cure everything but at the end of the day find out what works best for your child to be able to discipline and, 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 and to work through that amen now faith is the substance of things hope for the absence of things not seen this has been another great broadcast. This is Otis Young, and I'm excited about your future right now. Kingdom Life Preparatory Academy, one of Tallahassee's premier school of choices, is accepting students from 6 weeks to 12th grade. We're located at 1410 East Indian Head Drive. Our leadership team is experienced and strong in working with today's youth. We have highly qualified and passionate educators. We are unique in that we offer year-round services to include winter, spring semester, and summer camp. Meals are free. Small groups, small classes to 
accommodate students with unique abilities. We accept ELC and all state scholarships. Transportation is available for a nominal fee. We have athletic programs for all ages. Make the right choice. Enroll your family today into KLPA. Please call us at 850-597-7072 for more information. We are excited about your child's future right now. 